biggest case you've ever found. Is it the one that never let you down? Is it the most refreshing taste around? Look, is it the People's Court today at 4.30. What a waste. Some of the best work I've done so far, and look at it. No way in the world it can be repaired. The worst part is, I know I'll never get another chance to do Jody's portrait. Why did they have to destroy it this way? But maybe what I'm doing to Jody is far worse. Am I going to be responsible for leaving her life in ribbons like this painting? What would she do if she knew the full prophecy of the martyr of Eden? Maybe she'd go ahead anyway. Maybe. Oh, what should I do? Should I just tell her everything? Hi. Hi, Jody. I was just thinking about you. Something wrong? Everything is wrong. It just seems right. What do you mean? I went to see Miles this afternoon because I feel better when I talk to him and I trust his opinion. Yeah, I think I know how you feel, having someone like that to talk to. But you didn't tell him anything about me, did you? Tell him what about you? About how I really feel about Eden? That I'm sympathetic to a change in government? No, no, I didn't tell anybody anything about that. I didn't even tell Gavin. And believe me, keeping the truth from him is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. I know, but it's important that nobody knows. At least for now. Well, they're gonna know. Miles and Nicole are going to this pageant. What? How could they? There's only one man who controls the guest list, and he's very strict about the invitations. Mr. Ronaldo? Yes. How did you know? Because he was at the penthouse this afternoon. I don't, somehow they managed to get an invitation out of him. Chad, I can't stop them from going. Well, don't worry. It, it doesn't matter, really. But it, it could matter. Don't you understand that Miles and Nicole, they, they want to protect me. They do anything for me, and I'm, I'm just afraid that they're going to interfere. Well, don't worry about it. It's not important enough for you to get this upset about look, it, really. Chad, I can't help it. This whole thing is making me very, very nervous. I'm starting to get paranoid. Do you know I even thought somebody was following me on my way to the studio? Edge of Night is brought to you by mild ivory liquid. It helps hands stay young looking. And by advanced formula Crest with Floristat. Fighting cavities is the whole idea behind Crest. Hey, thought you were brushing your teeth. I was just thinking. About what? About Teddy. He always wins. Well, your brother's a lot older than you are. He'll always be older than me. I know how you could beat him right now. How? Come on. You could get even fewer cavities than Teddy, because he didn't have this crust at your age. Advanced formula crust has Floristat. So? So it's even tougher than the crust your brother had, or your mother had, or I had. When it comes to checkups, you could beat us all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's not so bad being the youngest after all, huh? <laughs> With advanced formula crust, your kids could have even fewer cavities than you did. How old am I? I'm 25. So am I. One of these swimmers is not 25, <laughs> but 34. She's Mary Lou Kenworthy, mother of two. Can you pick her out? They both look so young. But let's see their hands. They look young, too. My hands need as much care as the rest of me, so they deserve ivory liquid for dishes. The name ivory has always meant mildness to me, and I trust it to treat my hands gently. The rich, mild suds help my hands stay young-looking, even with all the dishes I do. Still can't tell who's 34? <laughs> it's me. Well, you sure look young. Swimming helps. What helps your hands look so young? My hands? Oh, ivory liquid. The mildness helps a lot. I'd never use anything else. Mild ivory liquid helps hands look young. Now, this Mrs. Revere is a prize piece. I mean, anybody interested in show business is going to fall in love with this thing here. This is an etching of a dame called Charlotte Cushman. Now, the minute I saw this, I knew you were going to fall in love with it. Because you see what it says down here? 1868. 
right? And it also says, Charlotte Cushman as Lady Macbeth. Now, I know, according to this picture, she was very involved in this here play. And this play was written by no less a guy than Bill Shakespeare, is that right? Right on, Mr. Lorimer. Yeah. Now, this is old. In fact, this is ancient. This is so old that I'll bet you that she was probably part of the original company, right? I don't think that's very likely, Mr. Lorimer, since this etching was dated some 300 years after the original production. And anyway, legend has it that Shakespeare himself played the first Lady Macbeth. He did? Is that right? Why did you think he was that time? Oh. No, 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 Mr. Lorimer, it's nothing like that. Hmm. There were no women in the theater of those days. Oh. All the female parts were played by men. It was customary. Well, I think the custom stinks for my money. <sighs> anyway, the most interesting thing about this picture is here. You see below this here where Lady Cushman is? There is a little box, and in that box, there is a signature in her own writing. And that's the real stuff. That's no con. A holograph. Yeah, it's an autograph. Uh, a holograph, Mr. Lorimer. Meaning written in the hand of. Oh. Yeah, well, that's what I said. Anyway, she's famous, huh? <laughs> yes. The most famous Native American actress in the mid-Victorian period. Native American? She don't look like an Indian to me, does she? Uh, no, Mr. Lorimer. She was born in Philadelphia. Oh. The first American-born actress to become a great star. Bigger than Farrah Fawcett? Infinitely. Hey, this Charlotte was some dame, eh? <laughs> yes, Mr. Lorimer, she was some dame. Mm, terrific. <laughs> anyway, uh, you're going to take that thing off my hands? What do you want to do? Are you going to... Well, I think it would be the perfect gift for a young friend of mine. He's in the theater, and I, I think he'd appreciate it very much, at least. I hope he will. He's going to take one look at that, and he's going to take you in his arms and give you a big hug and a big kiss. Well, in that case, you better deliver it first thing in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe, how are you? Hello, uh, Mrs. Revere, you met my associate, Joe Bumler, Mrs. Revere? Uh, she's a great connoisseur of fine art. And are you a lover, too, Mr. Bulmer? Of art, I mean. Oh. Yeah. Uh. How interesting. Yes, well, uh, you won't forget my etching, will you? Perhaps we can persuade Mr. Bulmer to deliver it in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll have it delivered first thing in the morning. You can count on that. Ciao, Mrs. Revere. <laughs> Ciao. 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 The dame is going to be loaded. She didn't even ask the price of this thing. How much is it? I don't know. It cost me a hundred dollars. I'll charge her, uh, charge her a thousand. That's fair, right? Yeah, it sounds okay to me. You're gonna make a few is, dollars, yeah. Eddie, Eddie, I didn't come up with anybody yet to uh, take care of the Travis kid. Uh, don't worry about it. I took care of it already. Uh, Troy is gonna take care of Jerry Travis. What do you think? That's smart. Sure. Why not? See, he can uh, hurt her just a little bit. I mean, you don't have to do anything real bad damage. Just hurt her enough so that she physically cannot go to that thing at the castle. You understand? You get it? I get it, but I don't like it. Why not? What's the matter with it? What's the matter with it is Troy. He's too raw. He's too, uh, he's too cocky for his own good. That's what's the matter with it. Come on, he's got you all bent out of shape, Joe. Yeah, I don't like him. He's trouble. I don't like him for the first minute. Well, he ain't too crazy about you either. I got news for you. He's gonna be trouble for all of us. I'm telling you. He's gonna botch the job and he's gonna get himself busted. Hey, there'll be a cop there. There'll be a cop, but he won't get busted. In fact, the cop will give a description of a guy totally different from Troy. I took care of everything. You mean Loomis? That's exactly right. I better get this thing wrapped up for tomorrow. Cushman, Cushman, Philadelphia. I know a guy in Philly who runs a string of pizza parlors, got a couple of strip joints. You know, that could be his grandmother. Yeah, no, Miss Joe Bomber. Yeah, not so good. Listen, I got to see you right now. Right now. Here's mud in your eye. Ooh. Always thought that was a terrible thing to wish on anybody. I take it back. Um, here's to my charming, adorable, loving, sexy, witty, intelligent husband, <laughs> Dr. Miles Cavanaugh. Now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> Speaking of somewhere, where are we? Why have you brought me to this 
den of iniquity and ordered strong drink. I'm a working girl, you know. I'm protected. Oh, how so? You may tempt the upper classes with your villainous demitasses, but heaven will protect the working girl. <laughs> All right, my proud beauty. I'm, I brought you here to talk to you. And frankly, I wanted to talk someplace that Jody wasn't. About her visit to your office today? Yeah. See, ostensibly, she came for advice. She wouldn't take Gavin's. They had a big knockdown, drag out fight about her going off for the weekend with Chad. Well, the only reason she's going with Chad is because he's the only one who can get her an invitation. Well, I don't think it was simple jealousy on Gavin's part. He's afraid for her, too, just as we are. I know it. I guess Chad doesn't even know that she's using him to do something which may depose his own father. It does seem a little underhanded, doesn't it? Yes. Well, there's some other things that indicate that she's falling even deeper into secrecy. Like what? She made a slip of the tongue this afternoon in my office. Said something about a, a man of Raleigh Castle who was going to help her when she got there. Tell her what to do. She wouldn't tell me who he was. New Trident Mints invites you into a whole new world of cool. A world of icy freshness. New Trident Mints. Shivers of frosty mint, sweetened without sugar. Nothing gets in the way of that tingly mint flavor. Trident Mints. Cool refreshment, sweetened without sugar. Discover the breathtaking freshness of new Trident Mints. And welcome to a whole new world of cool. Uh-uh-uh. A lady shouldn't use a sticky roll-on. A lady shouldn't use a scattering spray. What choice do I have? New Ladies' Joy Solid Antiperspirant. After comparing it to the sticky feel of the leading roll-on and the spray of the leading aerosol, most women chose the smooth, dry feel of Ladies' Choice. It goes on dry to help keep you dry. All day, every day. Ladies' Choice helps keep me dry. All day, every day. Make your choice Ladies' Choice. So, uh, how far is it to the castle from Monticello? About a hundred miles. And we're driving up? Yeah, I'll take my car. Okay, uh, what about accommodations for me when we get there? That's all been taken care of. You'll have a really great room and you don't have anything to worry about. I wish I could be sure of that. Yeah, I guess, uh, Gavin isn't too pleased about your going, is he? Uh, you could say that, yeah. <laughs> Jody, I know you're making a big sacrifice by doing what you're doing for us. I hope it doesn't mean trouble for you. You mean with Gavin? Yes. It might even cost you your relationship. Have you thought about that? No. No, I haven't. Because that's not going to happen. My relationship with Gavin is the one thing that is very certain. I see. You know, he may even think that I've contrived this whole thing just to uh, break up your relationship. No, he doesn't. He knows better. You know, I have to be honest with you. Frankly, if you did break up, I'd be happy. You know how I feel about you, Jody. Yeah, you've made it clear a number of times. Well, that's one thing I haven't tried to hide. Well, I hope that has nothing to do with what's motivated you about Eden. No. I planned some kind of demonstration at the Tricentennial long before I met you. Then when I found you here in Monticello, I had to do some quick maneuvering to make things happen. You know, Chad, the more I think about it, the more it really bothers me that I was being manipulated all those months. I'm sorry. I wouldn't have done it if it didn't mean so much to me, to my country. I really feel terrible about keeping you in the dark for so long. Excuse me. Hello? Chad? Yes? Miles Cavanaugh. Oh, hi. Hello. Uh, look, I know this is uh, pretty abrupt, but my wife and I would like to talk to you about this trip to, to Raleigh Castle in private and without Jody's knowledge. As you can imagine, we're very concerned about it. I understand. Uh, when? Well, we were hoping you could join us right now. We're just having a drink at a place called Robin's Lounge. It's on Park Drive in Cumberland. It's not too far from where you are. Um, yeah, I, I think I can manage that. Uh, say about 15 minutes. Yeah, I'll be there. Uh, bye. Um, I'm sorry, Jody. I have to go. Uh, an appointment, something unexpected. Can I drive you home? Uh, no. I have a dinner date in a little while. Listen, um, I'd like to stay here and think about some things, if you don't mind. No, well, stay as long as you like. I don't mind. I'll, uh, 
I'll talk to you later. Troy? Hi, what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm just, um, just hanging out, okay? Well, strangely enough, you're just the person I wanted to see. How about having dinner with me tonight? Yeah, I'd like to, Dee, but I... Uh, uh, before you say no, Cliff is treating. Look, I can't go, Dee. I got... Hey, Troy. Look, you said you were just hanging out anyway. Why don't you hang out with your favorite sister? Huh? Could you bake a better cake than a pastry chef? I really didn't know, but I do know how good my Duncan Hines cakes are. So I agreed to test one against a cake baked by Chef David of San Francisco's famous Canlis restaurant. My cake looked good, but the judge was Chris Canlis, the owner of the restaurant. That was Chef David's cake. It's tasty, but the texture is a little bit, a little bit dry. Then he tried mine. Good flavor, moist, very good. That's a great cake. Duncan Hines. <laughs> I think that's an exceptional cake. That's all a cake ought to be. Duncan Hines cakes, so moist and delicious you can make them better than a pastry chef's cake. Now taste something new, a carrot cake so moist, so delicious, it's the first carrot cake good enough to be Duncan Hines. If all we had to clean was one little spot of greasy dirt, most cleaners full strength would do. Mm -hmm. But greasy dirt gets everywhere, so I clean by the bucket with Top Job. Well, now there's something better. Are you kidding? I've tried ammonia and the leading pines, but when you clean by the bucket like I do, Top Job cleans the toughest greasy dirt better. Now there's something better. New Top Job. What's new? How much better it dissolves greasy dirt, even mixed with water. New Top Job breaks up greasy dirt faster, and faster means new Top Job cleans better. So now, when you clean the toughest greasy dirt by the bucket... Switch from pines or ammonia to new top job. Now its cleaning power holds up even better underwater. Ah, oh, thank you for joining me on such short notice. Oh, that's all right, Sky. Actually, the timing worked out well. Good. What are you drinking? Oh, a glass of white wine will be fine. Fine. Susan? Yes, sir. Chablis for the lady. Very good. Was there something special you wanted to talk to me about? You sounded rather excited on the phone. Did April Scott accept your offer? Oh, not yet, but it looks very favorable, and uh, I've got such great plans for it. That's great, Scott, really it is, and, and I, I want to hear more about it, but do you mind if I change the subject for just a minute? There's something that I should tell you. Oh, not at all. I'd much rather hear your sweet voice. Well, I don't think you're going to like this. If you give me a try. Me? You drink, ma'am? Thank you. <clears throat> The man that I mentioned to you earlier, who identified himself to me as Mr. Foley from the Counter Espionage Agency. Yes, what about him? He's a fraud. What? This guy, he's a fraud, and I have to warn you so that if he does contact you for questioning, you're not taken in. That's incredible. How'd you find out about it? Well, when you mentioned at lunch that you hadn't met him, Nancy got suspicious. Because logically, you would have been his primary interest here. So she called the Washington News Bureau and then she learned from them that there was no such agent listed in any intelligence department. That makes no sense at all. Uh, a government agent turns up at Monticello and starts asking questions, and then you find out he's a phony? I, I don't get it. I don't have the answer either, Sky. It's a mystery to me. Well, thank you for telling me, Val, but frankly, I find it very disturbing. Why can't they let the dead stay dead? Who is it that keeps dredging up the past like this? I can't imagine. But Nancy felt that it was important enough for us to tell the police. I mean... <laughs> Impersonating an officer is a serious crime, so we went to Derek Mallory, the chief of police, and told him the whole story. And incidentally, the detective Damien Tyler turns out to be the son of this Fowler Wilcox, who was Jeff Brown's boss. That's enough, Val. Think... Jeff Brown is a part of my life that I choose to forget about completely, and I'd much prefer it if you did the same. Uh, let's, let's just forget about the past, shall we? And, uh... Think about the future, our future. The celebration in honor of Eden's tricentennial will harken back to medieval days, including parades, horse races, uh, tilting with glances on jousting fields, archery contests, foot races, madrigal singing, concerts featuring medieval instruments, and, uh, oh, a giant game of chess played with life-size chessmen. Wonderful, use real horses for the knights. 
<laughs> food. Food will be served from colorful tents placed conveniently at several locations on the festival grounds and will feature, uh, get this, wild game, boar, beef and venison pie, puff pastry, cakes and ale. Here, here. Located on 200 acres of wooded land and green rolling hills, the looming presence of Raleigh Castle dominates the site of the festival. The 15th century castle was disassembled stone by stone and brought to the United States from its Eden home, and I didn't know that, where it was reconstructed on its present site at the turn of the century. Raleigh Castle contains over 50 rooms and includes two ballrooms, a baronial dining hall capable of seating 100 guests, and uh, <laughs> 36 bed chamber. <laughs> Sure, you to pay the laundry bill for that place. <laughs> I'd hate to have to run the kitchen. Well, that sounds like it's going to be a pretty fancy shindig, doesn't it? Shindig? Uh, I'm glad you brought it up, Sid, because, uh, see, I, I invited Dee Dee and Jody and Gavin, although Gavin had to back out, over here for a party. I didn't think you'd mind. <laughs> We're celebrating my latest conquest in the courtroom. Uh, I want to build an empire, Sid. <laughs> oh, good, you came. <laughs> Terrific. Well, 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 partner, congratulations. It's about time you won one. How long hello. has it been now? Hello, hello, Dee Dee. Hi, Sid. How are you? You remember my party. adorable. You, you remember my adorable baby brother, don't you? Yeah, but he looked a lot more adorable last time I saw him. What's the matter? Are you grumpy because you're hungry? The fact of the matter is, I ain't hungry at all. Terrific. You can order dinner and I'll eat it. Oh, then you are going to be four after all. Now, who's the fourth? Jody Travis. You remember her? You met her at lunch. Yeah, yeah. I just met her for a couple seconds, Dee Dee. How could you forget her? She's beautiful. Not only that, she's got it up here, you know what I mean? Not only that, she's about the only person I know of in this town that doesn't have one single enemy. Nobody has no enemies. This kid does, Buster. There's too much perfection here for one sitting. Dee Dee, I ain't hungry. Let me go. Stay, okay? Let me fatten you up a little bit. You I you want you it's Joe. Oh, here, uh, take care of that, okay? Hi, Jody. Yeah. Uh, hi. Listen, um, I'm calling to break our dinner date. Well, uh, uh why? Well, because I'm tired and, um, I, I think I'm gonna go home. See, I'm at Jim's studio and after I rest here a little while, I, I'm just gonna take off, okay? Um, well, sure. Yeah, we'll miss you. Um, uh, see ya. That was Jody. She says, uh, she's, uh, not gonna come to the party. Oh, that's too bad. Well, she says she's tired. Uh, she's gonna stay at Jim's studio. I guess she wants to be alone. Mm. Ah, they say that three is a crowd, right? Look, why don't uh, you and Cliff just hey, make it a no, twosome for dinner? Okay. Hey, what's with him, huh? You know, Cliff, I'm really trying to get to know him better. But he's not making it easy. Mr. Foster, why can't one toothpaste do it all? You need a complete toothpaste. Try Triple Protection Aquafresh. All the cavity-fighting fluoride of the leading paste, all the breath freshener of the leading gel, and gentle cleaners that even remove stained film. Concentrated in one complete toothpaste. Aquafresh does it all. Right. Triple Protection Aquafresh, a complete toothpaste. It's here, the better tolerated aspirin. New improved Bayer aspirin with the patented micro-thin coating. It's better tolerated than regular aspirin. Here's why. Regular aspirin can be chalky, hard to swallow, but coated Bayer goes right down with no bitter taste in the throat, no burning, and Bayer is as fast and effective as ever. It's here, improved Bayer with the patented micro-thin coating. New improved Bayer. There's never been an aspirin like it, ever. All My Children, return to the days of yesteryear and celebrate a joyous occasion with Cliff and Nina. I love you. Happy anniversary, Mrs. Warner. All My Children. Wow. Well, so much for the party. Counselor, I think you got a really tough case there. Yeah, the thought had occurred to me. I don't think your brother wants you to manage his life for him. Listen, Cliff, I'm not too crazy about the idea either. 
but better me than Eddie Lorimer. Or somebody like him. Loomis. Hi, Joe. I uh, took a chance and ordered you a double. Yeah, thanks. I was kind of surprised when you called me. You want to tell me uh, the because? Because I'm worried about something. A bad mistake Lorimer's making. If it's as dumb a mistake as I think it is, it's not only Eddie's head that's going to roll, it's going to be ours. Okay, wait a minute. Now, are we talking about the girl? That's right. Eddie told me you're in on it. Uh, I'm in on it. As soon as he gives me the word, I've got to call him on the wild, as a matter of fact. Then you know what he's going to do. He's using Troy to, uh, to mug that Travis kid. Well, Joseph, I don't think it's too bad an idea. After all, he has to keep her in town. No, it's never going to work. That Bannister kid, he can't handle it. I'm telling don't you. Don't worry. I'm there to help him handle it. Just wait a minute. What was that kid's name again? Bannister. Troy Bannister. <laughs> That's funny. I knew a lady lawyer in court by the name of Bannister. She had a brother. No, no, no. He was in the slammer. Same kid. He's not only a punk, he's got a lawyer for a sister. So, what do we do? Let him do his job. And you do yours. Apprehend him like the efficient cop that you are. But remember, he's armed, too. So you shoot first. All right? All right. Katie, this chili, is it homemade or Hormel? Why, Judge, isn't homemade chili rich like this? Is it homemade or Hormel? And doesn't homemade chili have plump beans and lean beef? Homemade or Hormel. And thick tomato paste and secret spices? Well, if it's got the makings of homemade, I guess it's homemade. Fooled you, Judge. It's Hormel. <laughs> oh. And it, Julie, this good deserves a remedy. Homemade or Hormel? When Hormel makes chili, they make it like home. Crunch? Girls, they're Planters cheese balls. Planters cheese balls are simply better tasting than, than those. Here, I thought you girls were smart. Mmm, mmm, great. Cheesy. Crunchy. They're Planters. Mmm, mmm. Mm. Well, at least you girls learned something this semester. <laughs> Planters cheese balls. More mmm, mmm after every crunch. Tonight on Happy Days, Joni and Chachi learn a lesson in harmony when they try to compose a new song. Then Frank and Carmine set off a laugh alarm when they bait a trap for a burglar on Laverne and Shirley. And hilarity hits the airwaves when Jack gets a chance to become a TV chef on Three's Company. After, Henry's in hot water in a jacuzzi with the wrong woman on Too Close for Comfort.